In Samplitude you can use effects not only at the track level, but also at the object level. Track effects are typically added from the mixer, the track insert slot, or the track editor. But you can also add effects to individual clips using the Samplitude object editor. In Samplitude Speak, any piece of audio that exists on the timeline is called an audio object. This would be the equivalent of an audio clip, item, region or event as in other doors. To open the object editor, select an audio object and double click or press Ctrl plus O or just click on the tab. In Samplitude Pro X, the object editor is now docked by default. To undock it, double click on the object editor tab, double click again to redock or left click and drag the tab upwards and release the mouse. You can also drag the object editor back down to the dock. When the green horizontal line appears, release the mouse. All audio objects inherently have their own object editor. You can have one object editor for one complete length of audio, or you can chop that longer piece of audio into shorter objects and add effects to those individual objects. You can then enjoy real-time FX processing using discrete object editors. No rendering is required. So in essence, every audio object has what you might describe as its own dedicated channel strip. The default object editor view from left to right includes a gain control, four auxiliary sends, five plug-in slots, an EQ section, right-click to open the EQ GUI, pan stereo controls, right-click to open extended pan settings, plus a volume fader. There is also a section for managing object automation. Next to that is an area for renaming objects or adding comments at the bottom, saving and recalling snapshots, applying changes to other objects and bypassing effects. Audio objects can also be frozen. Freezing an object will render all object editor effects, therefore replacing the existing object with the rendered version. This can be undone at any time. Right-clicking in a free space below the stereo control opens a context menu. This menu lets you switch between different skins, including Object Editor Max. Here you can view all parameters in one single window, including fade in, fade out, file browsing, objects and wave nudging, plus pitch shift time stretching. You can also open the selected file in Elastic Audio. If you prefer to use the default non-max view, you can tab between the three sections using the large buttons on the left. The beauty of the object editor is that you can target a specific segment of audio and add multiple effects to just that segment. For example, you may want to add some delay to the end of a vocal phrase, or perhaps a dub style repeat to a snare drum. Traditionally, to do this, you would need to use track based automation. With the object editor, you can zero in on a specific piece of audio and tweak until your heart's content. Because all objects are self-contained, they can be imported and exported between projects, complete with FX settings. First load an audio file or track that might benefit from object effects. A vocal take would be a good example. The aim is to use a stereo delay on a single word at the end of a phrase. The line is, what is mine, and I'm adding delay to the word, mine. What is mine?
Make sure Auto Crossfade mode is activated. It usually is by default. I'm now going to isolate that word by splitting it at the in and out points. If you're using object mouse mode, make sure the audio object is selected and place the play cursor at the beginning of the chosen word and press T to split the object. Then place the play cursor at the end of the word and press T to split again. Bye. Alternatively, if you're using universal mouse mode or range mode, draw a range over the word and press T to split the object at the range borders. Universal mouse mode is a dual purpose mouse mode. When placed at the bottom half of the track, you can select or move objects. When placed at the top half of the track, you can position the play cursor or draw in a range. Incidentally, to temporarily disable snapping, hold down the Alt modifier. This will override snapping of the play cursor or range. Snap can also be turned on or off by clicking on the magnet icon. Left click on the insert slot where the arrow is and from the plugin list navigate to Delay Reverb EFX Stereo Delay. I'm using the preset Delay Analog Old Tape. Position the play cursor before the active object and press the spacebar to start playback. When playback reaches the object start, the effect will kick in. You can hear that when the play cursor reaches the end of the object, the delay stops abruptly. Because the plugin is set to pre-fade, any slight crossfade will affect the tail of the delay. Select the adjacent object to the right and you should see a square object fade handle positioned near the top left edge of that object. Grab that fade handle and pull it to the right. Play that part again and this time you'll notice that the delay tail continues playing for the duration of the fade. This Try adjusting the fade by different amounts and note how it affects the delay. This it's, not it's also worth experimenting with different fade types. Click on the Fades tab to access these. Take note you can fine tune the position by grabbing the handle at the bottom left hand corner. This will move the entire fade left or right. This if I adjust the handle completely to the left so there is no fade, you'll notice that the effect tail will play as normal. This it's not so to summarize, when plugins are set to pre-fade, FX tails can be controlled by adjusting the object fade. You can change this behavior by moving the plugin to post-fade. Right click on the small rectangular button above the top insert slot to open the plugin configuration window. Now select the stereo delay and click the downward arrow to move it to the post fade position. By the way, you can also add plugins from within this window beyond the five slot limit of the object editor. Now when I play the object, the delay is no longer influenced by the fade. This my, 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 it's not gonna hurt. To summarize, plugins set to post fade ignore object fades. I'm now going to copy that whole phrase to a track below. Split the object at the beginning of the phrase. Next, control select the two objects and press control plus G to group them. Also make sure apply to all is ticked. When apply to all is active, any changes you make in the object editor will be applied to all selected objects in real time. Right clicking will open a context menu. Here you can choose what elements of the object editor are applied. Now grab the vocal phrase while using the keyboard shortcut combination Ctrl plus Shift and drag downwards to an empty track below. Ctrl copies the objects and Shift constrains horizontal movement while copying. Go to the Time Pitch section and from the Mode drop down list choose Monophonic Voice. I'm going to lower the pitch by three semitones.
place the mouse over the knob to the right of where it says pitch factor, then roll the mouse wheel towards you to adjust in increments of one semitone. Pan to the right using the pan control. Next, select the original phrase above and pan to the left. So now there's a harmony part to go with the original phrase. If certain words of the phrase don't work in the context of that harmony, just draw a range over the word and press T to split. Then adjust the pitch of that word to taste. VST plugins, EQ and AUX settings can be copied between objects using snapshots. The four snapshot buttons are located at the top right hand corner. Select the source object and left click on an empty slot to save. Then select the destination object and left click to load. The active snapshot will have a red dot at the top left hand corner. An occupied slot will also change colour. Right clicking on a slot opens a load, save and delete menu. Choose delete to remove an existing snapshot. Snapshots can also be used for A-B comparisons. For example, I'm going to save these current settings as snapshot 1. Then I can continue making changes. And save that as snapshot 2. I can now switch between these snapshots to audition different settings. Left click to activate a snapshot. You can also save object effects settings to a file. Left click on the small downward arrow below the plugin slots and choose Save Object Settings. To recall a saved object setting, highlight an object and choose Load Object Settings from the same menu. If Apply to All is active, loading an object setting will apply this setting to all other selected objects. To remove all object effects, choose Reset from the same menu. Take note that Reset currently doesn't remove AUX Send settings. To do this, right click on the button next to AUX, press the Reset AUX Sends button and click OK. You can also save objects complete with FX settings and then open them up in another project. This is useful if you want to create a library of objects with customized settings for specific purposes. Saved objects are interchangeable between projects. To save an object complete with FX settings, go to File, Save Object. To load a saved object, go to File, Open, Object. Now the object has been loaded complete with the saved settings.